All right, y'all, let's just start with a quick disclaimer here. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this month our patrons successfully bullied us into playing more of Spare Parts by Sophie Rose. Uh, however, uh, cards on the table, we had already been intending to come back to this <laughs> at some point. <laughs> the thing is, Chapter 2 is very is much longer compared to Chapter 1. It's about three times the length, according to the itch page. Um, so we were going to do it after we were uh, uh, during our next break in Higarashi, since that's currently our major ongoing series. Mm -hmm. uh, so here's what we're going to do. Because our patrons voted for this, this is our IOU. Okay, we're going to give you one episode now, and the rest of the and the rest of Spare Parts Episode Two will happen after we're finished with Higarashi Chapter Two. If you're just watching this on the playlist a couple months down the line, great, you can ignore this. <laughs> um, but we want to make sure we're able to give the game all the time and space it deserves rather than try to cram it in while we're, you know, uh, in the middle of another long ongoing series. Because this one will be probably nine, ten episodes uh, as opposed to the three for episode one. So do look forward to that. I will. Also, it has been a hot minute, so some character voices might be different because it's been a few <laughs> months. I tried to refresh mine on all on everyone I was voicing, but the I dangers of a long running series. Yeah, I do remember the broad strokes of the plot. Good up to this point here, right? Because you know our our friends, the units have awakened. They appear to be robo robots, and they live in the basement. They live in the basement, and they are coming across. They are coming across the the most brutal of all realities uh the cost of mere existence under capitalism <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun uh let's let's go ahead and start forgot i have to actually use the mouse for this one can't use my god i gotta click on things oh my god that's such a pleasant tone you want me to click again is that what's happening here all right Are you dreaming? Do you dream at all? Looks like this is going to go at its own pace. So I'm just going to let it go. What would you dream of, I wonder? Would I exist in your dreams? as you would in mine. I wonder. Oh, the sleep pods. Oh, this is... Oh, shoot, I forgot what voice we gave to just the... <laughs> Oh, darn. Oh, darn. Uh, I, got, I looked up everyone else's six. Good morning, Miss Unit 01. The time is 4 a.m. on Sunday, October 6th, 2020X. Rise and shine. Oh, okay. Um, Want me to just... Do you want me to narrate and just... Sure. Just a, uh, just a brief moment after the pod hatch lifts itself up, Unit 01's eyelids smoothly glide open. Her eyes quickly focus themselves onto the dark, distant, and empty ceiling above her. This very same ceiling she has woken up to every morning at precisely 4 a.m. And for another two minutes, she lays there. <clears throat> it's not time spent adjusting her eyes to the darkness, they are already in full focus. Their consciousness, too, is attuned to her surroundings immediately upon awakening. Still, she lays there for another two minutes. Motionlessly and without thought, she stares up into the darkness. But then she lifts one arm up and blocks out the ceiling above her with the back of her hand. Her eyes focus on all five of her fingers. What day is it? Today is Sunday, October 6th. <sighs> How many days has it been? 
It is day number 88 since awakening. Who am I? I am Unit 01. What is my purpose? I must protect Unit 02, <gasps> Unit 03, and Unit 04. What must I do right now? Wake up and review the previous night's diagnostics. With each answer, she retracts one finger until all five have curled into a fist. She clenches it tight and closes her eyes. Her fingers dig into her palm and her muscles tighten all the way down to her forearm. The sensation rings clearly all through her entire body and her mind acknowledges she is still here. One could think of that gesture as a sixth question. Whose body do I inhabit? My own. A clear affirmation that she has risen out of the darkness of sleep and into the waking world, still residing in the body she's come to know as hers. With the line between the two clearly drawn, she sits up straight and lifts herself up out of the pod. I sleep in my clothes because this is normal. <laughs> it is. You'd get cold otherwise. I, d I can just turn off the ability to feel cold. I can't. Why are you here? You're not even in this scene. <laughs> the first task of every day is always the same. While she sleeps, the charging pawns run scans on all four of them. She skips over herself and stands directly in front of Unit O2's pod taps a few buttons on the interface, and examines the screen carefully. Note the little touch where she skips her own, mm. looking at her own scan. And The state of her body, her mind, and her soul are laid out plainly in front of her. Organized into charts and graphs, automatically compared against data from the day before and all previous days. Rather than focusing on any particular point of data, she can clearly see the trajectory each of them are on every single morning. She can take note of troublesome trends before they become a problem. Unit 02, as usual, remains blissfully stagnant. Her numbers are the most consistent of anyone's. Battery at 100%, motor systems functioning properly, intelligence routines functioning properly, cooling systems functioning properly, EI core stable. A finished body made of working parts, there's not yet been any reason for concern, and it relieves Unit 01 to know that today is no different. Truthfully, though she would not admit it, she has her doubts about the completeness of the data she reads here. She has learned, day after day since awakening, that nothing is so simple that it can be accurately translated into one chart's worth of numbers. Their bodies are too complex for a single nightly scan to give her the fullest picture. Still. Unit 02 has not given her any cause for concern yet, regardless of the data. And so, she moves on. Unit 03's terminal. She shuts her eyes for a moment before activating the screen and sorting through the results. Charge is at 47%. Motor systems functioning properly. Intelligence routines functioning properly. Cooling systems functioning... properly. EI core stable. The results are the same as she has come to expect. They reflect the same slow trend she has been watching for the past few weeks. Firstly, Unit 03's battery has never held a charge properly, nor has it refilled its charge at a normal rate. While Unit 01 can recover from 0 to 100 in a few hours, Unit 03 would take nearly a week of constant rest to do the same. Relatable. Very relatable. She has been asleep since Friday evening, and yet she's still not even halfway to full. It wasn't as much of a problem when she was asleep for 99% of the time, but ever since a certain someone has appeared in her life, she's been waking up every weekday, at least for a short time. It's added up to this, and by the end of the week, she'll be forced to add even more hours of sleep to her daily routine. That's a conversation to have with her soon. Unit 01 makes special note of that. Having tried several solutions already, and none of them bearing any fruit, she turns her attention away from the matter of her battery and reads the line again. Cooling systems functioning properly. She furrows her brow. It says there is no problem, but then why? 
No, she tells herself. The data may not represent the full picture, but it is still reliable. The problem must lie elsewhere. You only need to keep searching. This is what she tells herself. Oh, it is I, Mr. Not Appear, or Mix Not Appearing on the title screen. <laughs> My apologies, I forgot they were they, them. <clears throat> she moves on again to the last of the pods. Unit 04's terminal. She hesitates a moment before pulling up the data. It presents itself plainly in front of her, and just like Unit 03's, it shows exactly what she was expecting. A body in complete disrepair. In such disrepair that Adobe Creative Cloud has to update. Or more accurately, a body left unfinished. She stares at the screen closely for some time, paying special attention to every particular point of data, and comparing it against all other points of data across all 88 days. For them, it is nothing out of the ordinary. She can't identify anything that has changed. Neither for the better nor for the worse. She feels guilty for finding some relief in that. Unit 04 was the only one among them who she could not reassemble in their entirety. When Unit 01 first awoke, the others were all in pieces, arranged neatly across the shelves near the bed she awoke on. Using blueprints she found arranged neatly next to all of them in some strange familiarity with the workings of their bodies, she put them back together. And she brought each of them into the waking world. Unit 04 was missing many parts. And besides that, it was clear their blueprint was a work in progress. She could only do so much. Yet, ultimately, it was by her own hand that Unit 04 was brought into this world. She pulls her hand away from the monitor and stares deeply into the frosted glass of their pod. Though she cannot see inside, she imagines them as they always are, asleep, unmoving, peaceful, neither frown nor smile upon their face, their consciousness attached directly to the network where they can do as they see fit in a virtual space. Was it cruel of her, she wonders, to carelessly bring them into this world before they were ready? No, no, it was never her choice to make. Unit 04 decided for themselves to continue existing in this world. She would never deny them that choice. And Regardless of all that, it is her duty to see that they can live happily in this world, along with everyone else. She intends fully to see that duty to completion. To complete their design, to acquire or manufacture the proper parts somehow, so that they have the same opportunities as the others, that is her aim. And to do that, she must continue to dig through the seemingly infinite files, documents, blueprints, and data stored on the various hard drives left behind in this basement. Everything she has come to learn thus far about their bodies, their creation, their purpose, has come from these documents. Only the most basic ideas are stored with minimal security. She's been able to access a large amount of information, but it rarely gets too specific. It rarely contains the details that she's looking for. It has been a long, difficult process, learning how to care for their bodies. She has only the most easily accessible information stored in this basement and her own intuition to go off of. But if she could only unlock all of that encrypted data, if she could only discover all the truths of their existence, surely the answer to all of their problems will lie in those files. That is her only hope. That is all she can do for now. Continue to attempt to unlock the answers. But all this along with the financial burdens of life, it seems that there is just not enough time. There is never enough time. She shuts the terminal down. It's time she got to work. Violet. Um. Um. Who is this? We. Huh. What? Is this is this the computer? I. Maybe. I. 
don't recall ever seeing you. Yeah, we haven't. But I'm wondering, okay. does the computer have a personification that maybe. is introduced this Maybe, episode? maybe that's it. Because it's the all caps and the blinking cursor. Yeah, would you like to be the, comp- the sure. computer lady? Good morning, Miss Unit 01. How are the results today? They are typical. Tell Unit 02 that Unit 04 has remained in relative stability today. They are free to do as they wish on the network. Understood, Miss Unit 01. Will that be all? Actually, I do have a question for you. I haven't spoken to 02 or 04 in a few days. Are they doing well? You will have to be more specific. Are their moods stable? Have they been active online? Have you noticed any peculiarities? I believe Units 02 and 04 have shown no substantial changes since you last spoke with them. All right, that's... that's good. It's going to be stressful if we're both doing this strained monotone. (laughs) Will there be anything else, Miss Unit 01? No, well... Um... Say hi to them for me, I... I suppose. As you wish. She blips out of sight as quickly as she appeared. Sunday, was it? It's Lucy's day off again, so she won't be seeing her. But tomorrow she'll return to work. They're going to continue supporting their livelihood. Her assistance will be essential. It may sound strange, but she knows it to be true. Until she returns, it might be best to focus on those encrypted files today. No progress has been made in a long time, but she has to keep trying. There is no time to rest. The others are counting on her. Sunday, October 6th at 8.13 p.m. Clink, 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 clink. The sound of porcelain mugs and plates clinking against each other, slightly muffled by the walls separating the lobby from the kitchen, but still much clearer than it would be in the middle of the day, with music playing over the speakers and cafe-typical chatter coming from customers and workers. It's quiet now because I'm the only one here in the lobby, sipping gently on my hot cocoa. Though I've sat with it for a few minutes, it's still just a bit too hot to take more than tiny sips. Oh, Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. (laughs) I see Lucy is subscribed to the Vivian School of Hot Drink. If you can see it steaming, it's too deadly. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Hey, at least it makes it easy for me to make breakfast for us. I know that I like mine hot and steaming, like, you know, just a couple seconds out of the pan. And yours, you like sitting cold like a brick there for a few minutes. Yes. So. <laughs> Lukewarm is best warm. Uh-huh. In the kitchen is my roommate, Killy. They're the only person still here, finishing up the end of their shift by hand-washing the last few remaining dishes. They said it wouldn't take more than ten minutes, but they were still nice enough to make me a hot drink, knowing how easily I get cold. So I'm pacing it out properly, using it to warm myself from the inside until they finish up. Even compared to just a week ago, the weather feels so much colder. It's only October. Does it always get cold this early in the year around these parts? I wonder how cold cold is for Lucy. Lately, all I want to do is bundle up in blankets, put on multiple layers of pajamas, drink hot drinks, and sit right next to heaters. That's all I've been doing at home. Killy makes fun of me, saying it's going to get extra bad by the time the new year comes, and we'll probably have a broken down heater by that point anyway. I can't deny it. Our apartment is a real piece of shit, and I'm a wimp when it comes to cold weather. I feel like I have the opposite problem with in terms of cold weather, where I will endure it for far more than is reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> Not because I want to, just because it's just like, oh, okay, I guess this is how cold it is right now. <laughs> and you'll be like, SK, what the hell? Then again, I'll be wrapped up in a shawl when it's like... 65 degrees <laughs> in here. That's true. It's a little bit... <laughs> Neither, we're both so on opposite ends of the spectrum that it's hard for us to tell. I don't like... See, the thing is, it's not opposite ends of the spectrum. I don't like 
cold things or hot things. I like medium things. Oh, I greatly prefer things to be cold than I do for them to be hot. I see. (laughs) Given the option. I just want it to be fall weather at all times. That would be nice, actually. (laughs) Well, I mean, hey, (laughs) soon enough, we won't have winters to worry about anymore. We won't have the falls either. Uh, Still, I've started to appreciate the comfort that comes from the warmth of a mug of cocoa settling in my stomach and spreading out to the rest of my body bit by bit. Yeah, that's how you do it. That is the true magic of a warm drink. It's just another new sensation I've discovered by moving out here. And I'm thankful to be wrapped in its embrace right now. I gaze out the window while taking my first substantial sip now that it's cooled a bit more. Across the street, I watch through the windows of other businesses and the few people still working inside them. I think about all the people in this neighborhood that I still don't know. The faces that might one day become familiar to me. The faces that might one day look at me with some level of fondness or at least recognition. The sort of faces who would wave to me on the street, not because we're close friends or they're particularly excited to see me, but because we know each other's faces. And that together we make up the community of this little patch on the outskirts of the city we live in. I've always wanted something like that. But when I think back to the neighborhood I grew up in, the one I was raised in for over 20 years, I always knew I never wanted it with them where every person on the street would see me and only know me as the child of my parents, where the only conversations I was pulled into were about whether I had a girlfriend yet or how school was going or to say hi to my dad for them. Is that the first indication we get that Lucy might be trans? Or it's just a really lesbian positive neighborhood. Here's the thing. I don't think you feel that way about a lesbian positive neighborhood (laughs) is the thing. I don't think you... I don't think you feel that way. (laughs) Most of the time. I don't know. Maybe it's different on Turf Island, you know? (laughs) But is that... I think that might be the first indication we get that Lucy might be trans. Things so completely disconnected from my life, it never felt like it was my face they were looking into. They only ever saw the child that I've struggled so hard to put behind me. And also how she refers to her old self as only the child and Mm. purposely avoiding gendered nouns. But now that empty shell of a child is dead. The people of this neighborhood can only know the woman who's alive today. Lucy, the clumsy, kind of awkward, but always polite girl that lives with the grumpy barista who bakes great pastries. I want that so badly. And... I can feel it very near. From behind the counter, a corner of Killy's face peeks out. Uh, sorry, I'm almost done. I'll make you another drink before I finish if you want. No, no, that's okay. Thank you, though. I'm in no hurry. Uh, Hey, sure. Thanks. I sink into my chair, holding my mug up to my face, letting the steam spread across my face and into my nostrils. Time passes, and Killy appears in front of me again. Yo, you, you done? I gulp down the last of my slightly lukewarm cocoa and hand them the cup. Hey, thanks. One sec. They bring it back to the kitchen and I hear the faucet turned on, followed by a few final clinks of ceramic and the lights shutting off. They walk back to the counter and survey the room, making some kind of weary face. Ah, alright, that should be fine. Karina better start appreciating how thorough I am with my clothes because this shit is exhausting. I rise out of my chair and pat them on the shoulder a few times. Yeah, having had to close down a cafe before, thank you for the pat, uh, (laughs) having had to close down a cafe before, it is, uh, not a fun experience. Closing down anything sucks because there's always the competing pressure of, well, we need you to do all these things when you close so that it's ready for the morning, and if you don't do this, then everyone's going to be really mad and you're going to get in trouble, versus you're not allowed to stay there a second longer than necessary or else you'll be working overtime which is Mm -hmm. evil so if you stay late to do the things to get ready for the morning then you're going to get yelled at well it's that whole dynamic (laughs) that uh, i I don't remember who it was you 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 uh were reading that identified this dynamic but i was really and this seems like a good place to actually (laughs) a good game as any to bring it up yeah um you'll know it when i start describing it the dynamic where there's this gulf between 
there's this very intentional gulf between what is made as policy and what is actually expected of the people working. Mm. Right? Uh, do, do you know what I'm saying? You you described you told me about a writer you were reading that had described this as like the primary way that companies actually like retail companies work generally. I legitimately forget what this possibly could have been, but I believe you because I read a lot of things and that sounds like a thing yeah, I would be reading about. Where it's like the, the real the real there like this constant elephant in the room of having to work these jobs where you know you are fully being told to do one thing but also that the expectation is that you somehow do another mm-hmm. right you know that you are being told like when you ask you are told to do a b and c but what you are graded on and what you are expected to do is d e and f <laughs> and the the way that no one will actually express it out loud to you <laughs> Despite the fact that this is clearly what they want from you. I you really don't remember who that I wish no, I'd written it down because that, that felt like a revelation when I heard someone else finally describe it out loud that way. And I was like, that's exactly what the fuck I experienced all my all the time I was working retail. It's awful. Ugh. Well again, sorry to keep you. You uh you good to go? Yep. Cool. Let's uh let's get going. We head out the front door, Killy turning around once more to lock up. They jiggle the handle roughly a few times to be extra sure. I've been noticing how diligent they are about small things like that lately. Elder Street Coffee. Hey, you hungry? Yeah, a bit. <laughs> I don't need much before bed, though. All right. Well, I'll whip something up when we get home, then. Thank you. Hey, sure. Uh, we, uh, we got any tomatoes left? If we do, I think they're probably bad by now. Right, right, right. Well, I'll uh, pick some up soon. Guess I'll hold off on making pasta tonight, then. Like I said, I'm not that hungry. Uh. Hey hair! <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it anymore, but that was my favorite one. Just hair! <laughs> the two of us huddle into our light jackets as we walk through the night, talking quietly about mundane things like that. What's your schedule tomorrow? Eh, another close. I'll make dinner before you get back, then. Oh, hey, sure, thanks. I'm not picky, so uh, make whatever. I only know how to make a couple things, so it'll probably be pretty familiar. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Thanks. I open the next morning, so I might only have a little bit tonight, but I could save some for the morning, too. Oh, God, the clopins. Those should be illegal. <laughs> yeah. Right, I'll keep that in mind. Like that. Mundane things that two people living together would talk about. Who's going to do things for the other? How our schedules line up? When we would have time off together? It's nice in a domestic sort of way. Things are honestly pretty good right now. Hey, you're uh, you're back to work tomorrow, yeah? That's right. I haven't heard much about it lately. What happened to all that drama going down last weekend? <laughs> it's kind of hard to explain. Yeah? My job, a cashier at the shop, spare parts... Though it's hard to say that I'm a cashier at this point. More of a janitor. Wait, is that feet? Is that what that says on the one on the right there? What? Is that feet? It looks like it says feet. It looks like it says feet. (laughs) Across the street from hair. I mean, yeah. A bunch of weird shit happened last weekend, and I can tell 0% of it to Killy because I swore myself to secrecy. I guess it would seem weird that I stopped talking about it entirely, but... Aside from the secret stuff, there's really nothing more I can say about it. Well, uh, hey, haven't seen us strung out since then, at least. Did it all work out somehow? Hmm, you could say that, kind of. You are... Listen, you're acting real fishy about that place again. They haven't involved you in any, uh, <clears throat> extra-legal business, have they? N- no, nothing like that. Uh-huh. Seriously, it's just... It's weird. Any place that would hire you without even doing an interview has got to be pretty weird, yeah. Not to say you didn't deserve it. (sighs) Sorry. (laughs) No, you're totally right. It's bizarre. I feel pretty lucky, though. Even if it's weird and stressful, I'm having a good time. Well, maybe it's not accurate to say a good time. I'm Uh. having a time. (laughs) No, no, not like that. I just mean it's kind of tough on me, but I feel like I'm doing good. I feel like I'm being helpful. 
And I really like my coworkers, even my boss. I keep telling you, Lucy, no such thing as a good boss. <laughs> I know. I think this is kind of different, though. She's not like a manager or some CEO or president <laughs> or something. And as someone who has been on the boss end of that equation, yeah, yeah, it's really hard. Even if you go into it with the best of intentions, that you have your own set of management. You have your own set of pressures and expectations, like the like the people you manage, and it's and the way that those pressures interact makes it pretty much makes it difficult, if not impossible, at least in like you know the retail world, to be what you want to be in a boss. Yep. More like she's just trying to get by and survive. She's a little weird, but any time I brought up a concern, she's listened and fixed it. Just don't lower your guard, all right? I, I know, I know, but it's really not like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killy sighs. We've <sighs> had this conversation a few times, and it always turns into this. I, I bet Killy's like, is... The thing is, from Killy's perspective, Lucy hasn't really had that many solid jobs yet, right? Yep. And the majority of jobs are that, are, you know... The majority of entry-level jobs, the kind of retail work that would be roughly equivalent to what Lucy's doing somewhere else, are not like the job Lucy has. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, <laughs> it is, and in those kinds of jobs, it is very, very unhealthy to go into it with the mindset of, oh, you know, you know, we're a family here. I'm going to be a team player. I'm going to give it my best because you're not being paid to do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's different. Like when I was like, like. Like, um, for a couple of years, I was working part time, um, for some family friends at, at a, at a pizzeria they ran a, like a small one room establishment that was open like two nights a week <laughs> for a few <laughs> hours. And it's different in situations like that because, you know, you know who you're working for. You're working a very small kind of specific role in that kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, there, there's a different relationship there. But getting hired by by a, a big company to do a job like that, it it is healthy to to keep an amount of distance and like understand what you are being paid to do and what you are being exploited for. Capitalism hour. <laughs> this is why we don't. This is why we don't let me pick the games on this channel anymore <laughs> because I just do this the entire time. It's not like I can blame them for being skeptical, but it really isn't like that. At least I really don't think it is. You might think the solution would be to introduce them to Zero One, but something tells me that would only make things worse. She's not exactly easy to understand the first time you meet her. Thanks for looking out for me, though. Yeah, of course. You are far too honest sometimes, Lucy. Innocent girl like you needs a shithead devil like me on your shoulder to guide you down the wrong path sometimes. Come on, you always say shit like that, but I know the truth. Deep down, you're a total sweetheart. Just to you. Everyone else is a bastard, and they'll receive nothing but my scorn. I know you have other friends. Uh Uh-huh. That doesn't mean that they don't receive my scorn. (laughs) Well, sure, they're the bastards I just mentioned. (laughs) Shut up. You're deflecting your sensitive side again. No, I'm serious. There's a reason you never meet them. Mostly that I'm the only one who's allowed to corrupt you. And you're the only one who's allowed to purify me. I think we're about even on the corruption purity scale, you know. And why is that, you think? Because we balance each other out. You see, we've got a good thing going here. (laughs) Right, of course. How could I forget? You are the yin to my yang. (laughs) We continue walking home, messing around like that. It really is nice. To feel so comfortable with someone and to share my life with them in some kind of way. Like a real family or something like it. I'm glad I moved out here. I do wonder what parts of Killy's life they are they are keeping under wraps. Release yourself from flame. Not because it's inherently suspicious, but because it it can be. You know what I mean? Mm. Like sometimes you know, like it's not like people can't have parts of their life they want, you know, to keep to themselves. That that's all well and good. Tips have been updated. Yay! No, hold on. Hold on, Unit 03. We gotta read tips. Oh, and it's a recap. I see. And here's the recap. Okay. And we've got all of our cast again with all of their... With all their stats. (laughs) 
<laughs> I don't think that's a real face. And you just, you don't get it. And a, you're here. You're just here. Hello there. Hi. Okay, okay. Hello. Huh? Yum. <laughs> I've been meaning Calvin and Hobbes. <laughs> I've been thinking, what's the best way for me to show people that I like them? <laughs> and I've decided it's by tackling them the moment they enter my sight. <laughs> As I walk in through the shop's front door, I'm immediately tackled by Zero Three. It's almost enough to knock me over, but over the last week, I've learned to expect her early morning glomps every day, so <laughs> I'm always mentally prepared when I walk through that door. It's not like I can blame her for being excited. This is the furthest she's been allowed to venture out of the basement in who knows how long. Of course she's pumped up about it, but how long will she keep doing this, I wonder? Until you glomp me! <laughs> Until the glomper becomes the glompy. <laughs> I'm shoulder gremlining. You're back. Hello. Oh, yep. I forget. She's not as. Br <laughs> I've, I've been doing the same area for Sadako and yeah. Higurashi, but she's. But Unit O three is not as like. Ah. <laughs> she's more just kind of like a little bit scratchy. <laughs> hey, did you have a nice weekend? Yeah, I didn't do much, though. She's not supposed to leave the building, but I suppose Zero Ones made a small exception for this area just out front. Keeps worrying about, like, me getting leaves in my air filters or anything. <laughs> yeah, that happens to me sometimes. Oh, really? Can I see your air filter? <laughs> oh, three, that is not what that means. I often see her staring out the windows of the lobby, across the street and up at the sky. I wonder if that's better or worse than not seeing it at all. It's not like there's much to do in the lobby anymore, if there ever was. Ever since all the merchandise was taken out, it's just an empty room. Even calling it a shop feels generous, but I've gotten used to thinking of it I that still way. think, like, O1's got, like, a great setup here for, like, a, a tech tech repair shop. <laughs> That's the perfect thing a, a weird, northern latitude, vaguely liberal city needs. A, a storefront in the downtown area for a for a tech repair shop with a bunch of out of date computers and you never really see anybody go in or out, but it's somehow still in business ten years later. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, someone's got to keep the torch burnt. I, I'm naming like three stores in our region. <laughs> you know you, you are. don't even know which one I'm referring to. I I oh I I mean like I <laughs> can take a guess. And, <laughs> like, let me roll a die, see which yeah. one we land on, right? <laughs> but also a little terrifying. I hope it doesn't turn into a job I dislike. Oh, I missed you. No, oh, I missed you too. Nom, 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 nom. If you missed me, you should have come to visit. I'd love to, but I don't know if Zero One likes me being around on my days off. I don't mind. I just think it's, pr it's healthy for you to keep a proper work-life balance. <laughs> I have no idea how long she's been there, but Zero One suddenly chimes in and takes a couple steps forward. As long as you're not doing work, you seem to have trouble with that part. Uh, well, I guess it depends on what you consider See, work. This is what I'm worried about, people taking advantage of you. Whoa, whoa, wait, hold on. I have an idea. All right, you ready? What if I come over to your place next time, Lulu? Oh, well, that'd be, uh... I look to Zero One for approval. Hmm. Maybe. I'm gonna give a definite maybe on that one. Why? Why maybe? I have to think about it. What is there to think about? You don't trust my sweet little Lulu. Look at her. She's so sweet. <laughs> you have to now. I need you to imagine O3 leaning over Lu Lucy's shoulder and just kind of like grabbing her cheeks. <laughs> If you can imagine that for me, then I think we'll all be on the same page. <laughs> That's not the issue. We'll talk about it later. Uh. Are there more faces this time around? There too? are. Okay, it's I was so going to say. Last Monday, we all agreed to think hard about what the future would look like for this place. But so far, nobody's come forth with any ideas. 
I've kept showing up to work, but since there isn't a store to look over, I've ended up doing all sorts of miscellaneous cleaning chores. After we decided the lobby was as clean as it'll get, I started working on the basement a little. It's not my ideal work, but if they're finding new things for me to do, it must mean they still want me around in some capacity, which is nice in its own way. But I can't help but feeling like I've been wasting away time and money this past week. The money they received from that guy who bought the entire store out, she said it'd only last a few months. Can we really afford to have me twiddling my thumbs on the clock without any ideas? It's a new week, so I came here with the intention of asking how progress is going. Of course, I don't think I need to remind them of anything. The amount of pressure they're feeling must be immense. There's not much to be gained from me pestering them, but asking is probably better than not, right? But yet again, I got swept up in Zero Three's energy, so it takes a little while for me to mention it. I am inevitable. <laughs> Hello, Lucy. Hi. How was the weekend for you two? Uneventful. Yeah, I was asleep the whole time. The whole time? Ask me how I make my face do this. <laughs> how do you make your face do that? Nope. I see. <laughs> Well, it's Monday, so that means a whole new week. I'm back again, so... Are you having me clean the basement again today? Uh, Zero yeah. Three looks up to Zero One again, a little more hopeful this time. Well, I did have something else in mind. While well, Zero Three was asleep, I spent the weekend agonizing over what direction to take our business. You see... Lucy, I notice you've been fidgeting a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You do very good work, but even when you're on the clock, you like to fidget with a very particular item that's kept around your ring finger on your left hand. Anything you'd like to admit to? I don't know what you could be talking ab about. <laughs> of course you don't. <laughs> Vivian really loves to just fiddle around with our wedding ring. I can't help it. I have to have my hands moving at all times. I know. It's just silly that of all the things you go to, it's the one where whenever you lose it, because you do frequently, you get the most sad about it. I need another thing to fidget with. Get me a fidget spinner. <laughs> fidget spinners make noise, though. See, that's why this one's quiet until I uh, drop it. Hey, I did more than just sleep, okay? Didn't you just say the opposite? They contain multitudes, Lulu. But I did not come up with anything on my own. And no one else seemed to have any viable ideas either. Hey, I gave you plenty! Just because you don't like them doesn't mean they aren't viable. <sighs> I need... <clears throat> Shush, there is no theme park in the world that we could fit in here. <clears throat> That's why we were going to be the first, though. <laughs> <laughs> Zero Three wanders away, mumbling bitterly to herself. What were her other suggestions, I wonder? Zooquarium. <laughs> the fish know they will die someday. That's what makes it so appealing. Anyway. Clearly just thinking about it from inside has not gotten us anywhere. If it were that easy, we'd have done that from the start. So that's why we want to do some reconnaissance. Reconnaissance? Like spying? That is going a little far. All I mean is taking a little walk and gathering information about other businesses in the area. I guess that's normal. Yes, exactly. It is immensely normal to do. There is nothing to fear. Not easing my concern. It's easing mine. That sounds like a good idea. It's a big neighborhood, so you could get some good ideas just from taking a walk around. That is the plan. Well, good luck then. Let me know if you come up with anything and... Uh... We were actually wondering if you would like to come with us, Lucy. Huh? Me? You are the only Lucy here. I'm not really sure how much help I'd be. It's not like I've come up with any ideas just walking around on my own. I. They say that three heads are better than one. <laughs> That's right. Three is a way better number than one. <laughs> So come on, Lulu, come with us. It'll be a lot of fun. And more importantly, we would really value your insight. You know more about human society than we do. I wouldn't bet on that. 
I'd probably be of more use cleaning, but... The two of them stare at me expectantly. Zero One's expression firm and mm. insistent, and Zero Three's eyes like a dog's after hearing the word walk. Yeah, 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 hitting yeah, both yeah, my weak points at once. Yeah, yeah. All right, all right. I'll come with. No need to look so serious. Hey, I'm so excited. Hey, Lucy, ask me how I got my face to do this. How did you nope. get your face to do that? Nope. <laughs> Thank you, Lucy. This will be a lot more constructive than spinning our gears fruitlessly. Hey, <laughs> shh, no one. Don't just casually mention our gears like that. <laughs> it is a figure of speech. Oh. Uh, I mean, then, yeah, yeah, we have we have gears. Lots of them. So many gears. Uh? Got metal <laughs> gears and guilty gears <laughs> and one gear that's a Pokemon. <laughs> All right, then. Let's get going, team. <laughs> Zero Three hurries out the door without any hesitation. Hey. Zero One follows quickly after her. I see a tiny bit of hesitance in her eyes as she rushes to catch up with her. That's right, this will be Zero Three's first time outside in the real world in a long time, right? Or is it her first time ever? It couldn't be, right? Hair! Beat. <laughs> all right, so, where should we go first? I bet there's all kinds of amazing things to see around here. I mean, if you like Strodes. <laughs> no, they're further north. <laughs> We both look to Zero One, expecting her to have a huge list of answers prepared, but she's silent. Um, hey, Lulu? You live around here, right? Any ideas? Um, well, I've only moved to this area a little while ago, and it's not like I get out that much, so I'm not really... Hey, really? Aren't you supposed to be the expert? You two decided that on your own. Look! Look, there's a bunch of places over there! Does that say very nice laundry? I think so. Oh, that's delightful. Oh, I love all of these business names. And the car's license plate just says nice. <laughs> Look, there's a bunch of places over there. Where are all of those? Tell them for me one by one. She gestures to a strip of little businesses arranged around a little parking lot. Those over there? I turn my attention to the shops, realizing I'm going to need to explain these to her. Lord, where do I start? <laughs> <laughs> oh, which one do you start with? Oh, no. Let's start from the left. All right. Well, that on the corner is a gas station. A gas station? What do you do there? Uh, well, you fill your car up with gas. How do you fill it inside? Is there a garage around the other side? Oh, no. It's those pumps, you see. You pull up to them and use the hose. Oh. Well, that's so obvious now that I think about it. Silly me. <laughs> Has she never seen a gas station before? Maybe I underestimated just how sheltered she's been. Hey, look! Free bar! I love it. <laughs> what do you do inside, then? Usually it's a convenience store. It has, like, snacks and drinks and stuff. <clears throat> she nods seriously. So you eat while your car does, too. I get it. Yeah. You got it. <sighs> I glance up at Zero One, hoping to glean any kind of understanding from her, but she's looking at the station just as intently. Hmm. I have heard oil is a cu I have heard oil is a cutthroat market. And that aside, I'm not sure I want our livelihood to be tangled up in the depletion of fossil fuels. I do not think that will work. Plus, I do not know how we will fit the cars inside of the lobby. <laughs> Was she really considering it? I will consider anything once. I could kind of go for a gas station chicken tender now that I think about it. As could I, I assume. Could you? <laughs> I assume that to be the case. Have we established that yet? Like, can you? I can do anything I put my mind to, Lucy. I see. Don't test me. <laughs> That's a clinic. I think it's a private practice. That is out of the question. The hoops they make you jump through before they deem you fit to treat humans are absurd. <laughs> uh-huh. I want some medical dramas with all four. Way too much drama, anyway. And what are we going to be? Just open them up and clean them out, right? 
I mean, you're putting strangers' lives in your hands. They can't let just anyone do it. I could do it. You say that, but... Come here. I'll do it to you right now. Do you need any surgeries? <laughs> Please don't joke about things like that. <laughs> so just one, then. <laughs> Thinking about zero one one performing surgery brings me back to the sight of a certain disassembled body I'm trying desperately not to think about. That's a hair salon. Hair salon? Like for selling hair? Uh, not quite. You pay someone to cut your hair. People pay for that? Why don't you just do it yourself? It's not really something most people can do themselves. If you try to cut your own hair in the mirror without any experience, it'll probably be a disaster. Then I'll just do it for free. You want a haircut, Lulu? Uh, no, I don't Come think... Come here! What do you... Ah! She takes a huge chunk of my hair in one of her hands and... See? Human hair is weak. I don't even need scissors. I can just rip it out for you. No! Hello! I am learning! <laughs> ah, I will get it! O3, please leave her alone. D, but I wouldn't do that, obviously. Your hair's too pretty to rip out. Lucky me. <laughs> <laughs> the faces in this are. Here's the thing that I'm like. The, you didn't see this because we started recording on the main screen, but when we booted it up, there was like the, like a, a brief warning that content of these episodes might not reflect how reflect how the intensity of future episodes, right? And only a game that's preparing to be really, really depressing can be this cute and funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Speaking of hair, I've been growing it out for a while now. I should probably get the ends trimmed eventually. How much longer should I let it get, anyway? Oh, it is feet. That's, um, a foot massage parlor. Oh, hey, what's that? That sounds cool. Cool? Um, I guess it's a place you go to have your feet massage. Oh, I know that, but like, what's it like inside? What's, what's the vibe? I don't know. I've never been in one. Yeah, I see. Is there good money in it? Maybe. I don't actually have any clue how much a session costs. I've always assumed that anything like a massage would be way out of my budget. Right, right. It does seem kind of specialized. Maybe hard to get customers frequently. I'm not so sure. After all, most people have feet. Oh, hey, good point. Big target market. But we would be in direct competition if we opened up the same business just down the street. I'm not sure that we would get very far. True, true. Good thing, Incess. You're really up for anything, huh? Not that I'd mind a chance to have zero one. Wait, what am I thinking? Never have zero one do what? <laughs> your thoughts are written all over your face. Come on, tell me. What was it? What was it? I want to know. I want to know. Hey, hey, Lucy, I want to know. No more thinking about feet. 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 <laughs> Now there are two interpretations to this, right? Is this Lu does this mean that Lucy is does indeed have a foot thing, <laughs> or is it specifically about the image of O1 giving her a foot massage? <laughs> oh, I know what that is. That is a laundromat. Yeah, that's right. There are a lot of those around here. I don't think a lot of the cheaper apartments in this neighborhood have washer and dryer units in them. Ours certainly doesn't. I wonder why. Um. I don't know. It stinks of socioeconomics to me, but I couldn't tell you exactly why it is. Are they expensive? I don't really know. Might have to do with when some of the buildings around here were built, too. But this is all just conjecture. I truly have no idea. I wonder why our building doesn't have any. It is quite large. Yeah, that's true. Maybe just no need? Perhaps not. Hmm. She seems particularly interested in this for some reason. So strange. Probably because it, it seems like the kind of thing where she could afford to, like, pay for the setup, right? One more laundry is always going to be helpful because you're, whenever you go to a laundromat, right? There's, it's always full. It's always full. Or someone's broken into it and sleeping there. Yeah, or both. Or both. At any rate, none of these sound worthwhile. Definitely not. So what's next? Well, let's keep walking. 
Even wrong answers will get us closer to the correct one. Aye, aye, Captain. Love that mindset. It, Love to be wrong. It's genuine. It's genuinely a very helpful mindset to have, right? Yeah. To be able to be like, yeah, even proving the null hypothesis helps us, right? Like, the, the, it's still, it's still helpful to to realize, no, this won't work. Um. Oh wait, hold on. I try to be wrong every day. That's cool. Uh, I just realized <laughs> they're driving on the left side of the road. Are they? They are. Wait, what? So on oh, the wait, cross is road, that the back side or the front side of the car? It's the back side because the rear view mirrors are in the front there. Yeah. Wait, but the, so the crossroad, they're both heading left. But across the intersection, they're both heading towards us. But that wait, car, are they? The one, well, you can see like the headlights on that one. And yeah, I that's, think the other one is heading away on the other side of the intersection. Okay, so... It looks like the, the crossroad is a one-way street. Is it? Yeah, because look, look, look on both sides of it. You, you can see in the in the the closer lane, there's someone driving to the left, and on the further lane, there's someone driving to the left. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So that's a one-way street, but it's got streetlights on both sides. But there's streetlights for two lanes. Oh God! Am I just thinking too much about it? I kind of figured that it was one car heading that way and the other one heading the other. Oh, maybe. Hmm. I didn't think so because of the position of the uh, the door handle, but maybe that's just me. Hmm. Anyway, put your theories down below where this takes place. If they're... <laughs> <laughs> oh, please slow down a bit. Uh, all right, I'm fine. Yum, 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 yum. She starts skipping at a reasonable pace, humming to herself as O1 and I follow a few yards behind. She seems in high spirits. Yes, yes she does. I still have some misgivings about letting her outside, but I can't deny the immediate benefits to her mental health. It is a valuable experiment, if nothing else. What exactly are you worried will happen? That she'll get lost or something? Nothing that simple. It is... Too complicated to get into. I... I see. Still, I'm glad you're giving her a chance. Hopefully this will go fine and she'll realize that it's okay to go outside, at least every once in a while. Did you have a conversation with Zero Two and Zero Four, too, about them going outside? Unit Zero Four is absolutely out of the question. To even broach the subject with them would be cruel. Ah. But Unit O2 is a different story. In truth, I wouldn't have any objections if she said she wanted to go outside, but she's never brought it up. As far as I know, she isn't interested. I cannot understand her true feelings very well. I see. When I talk to her, she seemed sad about something. Well, thank you for your insight, Lucy. I genuinely can't tell if that was sarcasm. What is sarcasm? <laughs> I genuinely can't tell if that is sarcasm either. I know. It is my superpower. <laughs> I've decided to weaponize being unable to be read. <laughs> be autistic enough to become the world's greatest poker player simply by virtue of being unreadable. Exactly. Oh, oh, <laughs> hey, guys, guys, check this out, check this out. We both look forward to Zero Three, who's waving her hands around at something. While talking to Zero One, I'd kind of forgotten what we were doing. It felt like we were on the cusp of getting into something important, but then Zero Three yells out and interrupts us. I found a snail! When we look to where we're gesturing, I see that she's pointing us towards a car lot? Just one of those local dealerships you see weird TV ads for all the time. What's she so excited about? I found where the cars live! Get you one! <laughs> <laughs> wow, what the heck is this place? There's so many cars! What are they doing here? Zero One and I exchange looks. <laughs> well, um, what are they doing here? This doesn't seem like a normal parking lot. She doesn't know either? And why am I the one answering all these questions anyway? I don't know anything about anything. Is this indeed... To borrow a phrase, where the cars live. <laughs> oh, uh, this is, uh, it's like, 
where you buy cars from... Cars, huh? Do you know much about cars, Lucy? I know literally nothing. They might as well be magic to me. Is that how you perceive things you don't understand? Hmm? I am certainly no expert either, but I think I have a vague understanding of how they work. They're not really my wheelhouse. Nice one. Really? That's kind of surprising. Thank you for acknowledging my joke. (laughs) Or, in canon, please acknowledge my joke. Well, I guess I didn't see anything like car parts and all the stuff you were selling. Please acknowledge my joke. (laughs) Are you some other kind of mechanic, Zero One? You seem experienced with machines. Oh, are they finally getting around to... I guess you could say that. (laughs) I know how to repair most things, but I've never repaired a car. They're not quite the same as what I typically work with. I see. Uh, She touches her chin as she usually does when she's thinking about something. Is she considering... Anyway, there's so many of these things here. Yeah, there were so many colors. Yeah, now that you mention it, I feel like there's a lot of less common car colors here. Oh, oh, hey, look at this one. (laughs) Zero Three hops up to one of the cars closest to us. Don't scuff it, otherwise we will have to buy it. It's the bright orange one, and that's about all I could tell you about it. I don't even know what manufacturer's logo that is. She presses her face up against the window. This one is so cool! Hey, I don't think you're supposed to touch them like that. Uh, like what? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. You don't need to apologize to the car. Um... Hey... Hey, oh one What? You think maybe we could... No. I'm not turning you into a transformer. <laughs> Come on, at least let me finish. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Can we buy a car? No. What? <laughs> Come on. We cannot afford it. I saw how much cash was in that briefcase. We could totally afford it. We totally cannot. What do you think that money is paying for? Not frivolous things like cars. It's not frivolous. Think about all the things we could use it for. All the crazy fun road trips we could go on. Can you even drive? Uh, yeah. Of course. Who can? Uh. <laughs> I know for a fact that you cannot. How did you know that? Maybe I learned. Maybe I watched a VirTube tutorial. That doesn't count. When why doesn't it count? It's not like you drive either, can you? No, I cannot either. So it would be meaningless even for me to buy a car. Well, 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 I'll take classes then. I'll get a license, and... Unit 03, please drop this. Eh, whatever. Zero 03 turns her back to us and huffs. Huh. Hey, it's okay. I've heard driving's not even that great. Traffic is really uh, bad, and it's like hard to do? Mm. My stellar attempts at supporting her don't seem to reach her. She stomps away without (gasps) responding, (gasps) back toward the (gasps) shop. I take a couple steps to follow her, until I notice that Zero One isn't looking our way. She's turned toward the huge lot of cars, not saying anything. Mm. Could I become a car thief? (laughs) Car thievery. Hey, Zero One, are you? Lucy, may I ask you a favor? I am going to look into something briefly. Could you please make sure that Zero Three gets back all right? Sure, no problem. Um, is everything okay? It's fine. I will catch up shortly. All right. I do love the one bit where she's clearly unhappy that Lucy didn't recognize her pun. <laughs> like, like that, that's so... Oh, that's good. That's good. <laughs> I read a book on humor. I have been practicing. <laughs> you could say it was a hair-raising experience. <laughs> with the bunny and the hair. <laughs> do you get it? Please laugh now. <laughs> I jog up to Zero Three before she gets too far ahead, and the two of us walk the west- rest of the way back in silence. Uh, I'm being silent now. <laughs> well, we're back. Yeah. 
She walks over to the front desk and hops up on top of it, laying on it with her arm hanging off. Ugh. Um, how was it? Yeah. You know, going outside. Oh, that part? Uh, it was fun. Um, if it makes you feel any better, it's not like I have a car or know how to drive either. Oh, thanks, but I don't really care about the car. No? It's not hard to puzzle out why she might be upset, but I'd rather give her a chance to get it out on her own. Oh, I'm sorry for throwing a fit about that, by the way. Ah, uh, I'm embarrassed. It's okay, I've embarrassed myself plenty. Everyone does it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but... No one brings out this shitty, bratty side of me. When she starts telling me what I can and can't do, it just starts spilling out of me. Well, I don't think she'd mind you doing something like getting a car if it was your own money rather than the shops. No, she would. She'd find something wrong with it. That it's too dangerous, or...? Hell if I know. She never tells me those things. Right, because Owen's probably not telling... I will... Uh, there's there's two ways this could go, right? Either Owen is not telling O3 about the, you know, why her battery... About the fact that her battery isn't capturing things well, or mm -hmm. isn't holding a charge well, and that it's not safe for her to be out for long periods of time because she will just, you know, stop functioning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or O1 has tried to explain that to O3 before, and O3 has just not listened. Mm. I would fully believe either of those explanations. How many nine volts do you think it would take? Uh, for what? For breakfast? <laughs> 27. That was my record. <laughs> I can do better, though. <laughs> Wonder what's fucked up about the whole thing. I don't even know why she hasn't let me out of the building until today. Okay, so O1 hasn't told her then. Or, again, maybe she did in O3 is just being, you know, a little bit understandably frustrated and probably not listening. You mean, you really don't know the reason and she hasn't told you? Oh, but it's always vague excuses, like, it's too dangerous to go alone, but she never tells me how or why it's dangerous. Now all of a sudden she's letting me out because you told her to? Why didn't she listen to me all the times so I asked her before? I don't know. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to- Oh, no, 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 shut up. You have nothing to apologize for. I love you and you're perfect. You're just trying to help me, and I know she's your friend too, but... Uh, just thought she'd care a little bit more about my feelings as her sister. I guess not. <laughs> I don't think she... I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Ah, oh, welcome back. I'm going downstairs. Harumph! Hum, 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 hum. Zero Three abruptly spins herself off the desk and makes for the basement door. Please don't trip. I won't. Ow. <laughs> it slams shut, leaving just Zero One and I in the lobby. Is she still mad at me? Um, yes, but it's not my place to talk about it, I don't think. You should ask her. It is surprising for you to mind your own business. <laughs> anyway, did that little trip give you any ideas? I'm not certain. You're not sure. Well, we'll all keep thinking about it, and maybe something from today will click. Huh. There's something else on her mind, isn't there? What did she stay behind to do? I feel like they're so close to getting to the idea of opening a repair shop, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, you can get there. I believe in you. Well, I suppose that is all for today. You may go home. Huh? But, uh... What is it? Well, it's barely 11 a.m. Shouldn't I stay for a while? Get back to cleaning? Um, yes, if you'd like to. I suppose that is fine. She opens the basement door and leads me down the stairs. Down in the basement, things are quiet, despite Zero Three coming down just now. Did she go straight back to sleep? I feel a little nervous for some reason. I guess I'm still not used to Zero One letting me come down here. I'll leave you to it, then. Sure thing. She walks toward her work area in the back, and I try not to sigh in her wake. She seems really out of it. I hope I have a chance to ask what's up before I leave. For now, all I can do is focus on untangling some of these wires.
that turned orange. Different viewpoint. Oh, yeah. 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 I slam the basement door shut as hard as I can. It's huge and it's made of metal. So the wall shakes a little bit as I do. It's a little bit satisfying, but not nearly enough. Oh, we've got her battery indicator in the top right. Okay, so e- and so her she, temperature. So she probably knows. Yep. Even okay. I scream out in frustration as loudly as I can to the huge room. But, ugh, of course, nobody answers. Nobody ever does. That just makes me angrier. Swallowing it as much of it as I can. Heave my shoulders with a loud, dramatic sigh. There's not much I can do right now. Lucy's going to come downstairs for work soon. Probably, but... I don't want to see her... I don't want her to see me like this. Poor girl is stressed enough as it is. I start trudging back to the center of the lab where our four charging pods are set up. It's the only place I have to do anything fun, really. I'm not allowed outside of my own, and there's nothing down here but complicated equipment that I'm not allowed to touch. I can do to blow off some steam, so... Maybe I'll lay down and... Uh, to turn the corner into the charging area, I notice that O2 is standing awkwardly in front of hers. She turns her head away from me as soon as we make eye contact. Oh, hey, you're up. So, I voiced O2 last time, but she only appeared in, like, one or two scenes. Like, she barely showed up at all. She, yeah, I was checking something when I heard you yell. Something like that. Do you want to take O2? Sure, I Just try. so I'm not scratching to myself for this. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I was checking something when I heard you yell. Uh, sorry. I was just, uh, doing some vocal exercises. <sighs> right. But I'm done. So I'm gonna sleep now. Goodbye. Lulu will probably come down soon to start work, so you might want to disappear too. Thanks for the warning. Well, night night. I lift one leg into my pod, wanting to get out of this conversation as quickly as possible before I blow my freaking top, but she calls out to me unexpectedly. How was the outside? Huh? I look back at her and she's turned her face down toward the ground, as always. It's obvious what she means, but I can't understand why she's asking it. What's your game? She's just pissing me off even more. Why do you care? You are welcome to join us. You should have come along if you were so interested. I wonder if there's resentment from O3 to O2 because O2 has the ability to go out and do what she wants and chooses not to. Mm. Right? <sighs> well, it was freaking amazing. Frankly, and I'm so overwhelmed with the beauty of nature and all God's fucking majesty that I need to lie down and nap. So if you don't fucking mind... You're pissed off. No shit, I'm pissed off. So what? Despite the danger, Zero One tried letting you outside. You should be a little more grateful. Ugh, come the fuck on. Can I get the one conversation with O2 without it turning into this? Who said I was pissed off at 01? You were right about her. She is so wonderful and generous. I can't even handle it. So gentle. So trusting. I feel love from everything she does. I could just barf if I had barf in me to barf. What happened? I barfed. (laughs) She just... (sighs) It doesn't matter. The point is, she only let me out because someone else told her that she should. Whenever I ask for something, it's always a no, no matter how simple it is. What did you ask for? A car. That's it. That's a ridiculous request. Okay, well, whatever. Maybe it was. I don't care. She didn't even listen to me. I could have been asking to sniff a flower and she'd find a reason to turn me down. We don't have olfactory... Not the fucking point! Am I wasting my time telling you about all this? You're always on her side. That's because she's right. She is the one assigned to take care of us. That is her function. If she has come to a conclusion involving our safety, she is most likely correct, no matter how much you dislike it. That is such bullshit. I'm a grown-ass woman. I can take care of myself. 
we don't grow. Shut your pedantic mouth already. I don't care. <sighs> what does it even matter to you anyway? You don't want to leave. She never turns you down because you don't want anything. Well, I do. And all four probably would too if anyone would even tell them about the outside. <sighs> now I'm going to goddamn fucking stupid sleep. Thanks for pissing me off so I can let off some of that steam. <laughs> Finally get both feet in my pod and lay down, shutting the lid as quickly as possible. I lay in the darkness for a while before plugging myself in. Just staring up at the thick, dark glass above me. This stuff you can't see out of? O2 almost pisses me off more than O1 sometimes. Shouldn't we be on the same side? Shouldn't we be working together? And... Ultimately, she's right. I I know she is right. It's just... It's just not fair. It's not fair! Life is unfair. So what will you do about it? The black bar is rolling across. Can't help but remind me of Higurashi now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now that we've been playing that, Data Shard number one has been reassembled. And the way that we get the end of chapter menus as well, <laughs> I, I feel like, I, I feel like I, I'm learning something about the, the, the inspiration for this work, perhaps. <laughs> well, let's look at the Data Shards real quick, because we, we still got a little bit of time left in this episode carcass it says is that what this is called it said that in the bottom right it caught her eye all of a sudden in the middle of another conversation until it ended and the others began to return home hey oh one are you lucy may i ask you a favor i am going to lock look into something briefly could you make sure that oh three gets back all right sure no problem um, is everything okay? It's fine. I will catch up shortly. All right. Huh. She waits until Lucy is left eye shot and turns back around toward the object of her interest. This strangely shaped ugly thing, rusted out and stripped bare of all its components, laying here ignored at the side of the road in the corner of the car lot as far out of the way as possible. It's the only one like this. Miss, is something troubling you? No, I was only curious about this. This would be the remains of an automobile, miss. I, I know that. Of course, I apologize. I don't suppose this has simply been left half-built. That seems unlikely. Typically, only saleable vehicles are displayed. I imagine this is not part of the selection. Then... Uh, excuse me, miss. An unfamiliar voice calls out to her. She turns her head calmly in its direction, still half enveloped in her own thoughts. She sees a plain looking man in a blazer and jeans, some sort of wildly patterned tie hanging from his neck, shirt buttoned up to the collar. Her immediate reaction is of distaste, and it quickly proves not to be unfounded. Hey, so glad you're stopping by today in the market for a new ride. No, I wasn't. Well, have we got quite the selection if you take a look-see over in this direction. See, and today's your lucky day, too, because we're having a no-finance deal and, uh... Thank you, but I am not interested at the moment. No? Well, if I may say so, you've only laid eyes on the bottom of the barrel. He gestures towards the ruined car that Unit 01 has spent so much time considering. She looks between the two, furrowing her brow unpleasantly. So this is part of your selection, then? Ah, well, no, and my apologies for the eyesore miss, but it's just here temporarily while we sort out send it over for scraps. You have my guarantee every part will be reused, not a bit of it wasted. Scraps? Well, yes, it is totaled. Not much else to do about it. The engine seems intact. That and about nothing else. Look, my apologies, but I gotta say you're missing the point. I saw your daughters earlier take an interest in this orange beauty over here, so... Daughters? Hmm? Ah, yes, those two. Wait, don't go just yet. Ah. 
Unit 01 turns heel away from the man and, mach- and the machine while he's still trying to make his sales pitch and starts walking away. He calls after her just a few times before giving up, probably recognizing that she won't easily be swayed by his words. What an unpleasant man. Indeed, though he confirmed my suspicions. Your suspicions, miss? It is to be used for scraps, as soon as they can haul it away. That seems to be the case. Huh. Is there something bothering you, miss? I'm not sure, but I ought to return home. As you say. With one last glance over her shoulder, she continues her walk home. And though she won't voice them, her worries ring clearly in her head. Scraps. That word stirs a darkness inside her heart that she cannot put to rest. And so it echoes inside of her chest, growing slowly dimmer but never dissipating. Oof. Because she's clearly seeing some of her own. She's clearly mentally conflating, right, their existence with that of cars. Yep. Which, oof. And that's why it's titled Carcass. Carcass. Because it's a car Car carcass. It's a car carcass. There's there's layers here. Good times. There are layers to all of this. Oh, man. And that ends chapter one. It sure does. So here's what we're going to do. This is going to be on break for a little while. Um, because we're going to finish off Higurashi Chapter 2. After we're done with Chapter 2, we will come back and play the rest of Spare Parts Episode 2. And I hope that you'll enjoy it. Um, Please look forward to it until then. Again, sorry that it's just a little bit of a teaser, Mm -hmm. but it's going to be a pretty meaty series when we get to it. So we do hope you'll look forward to it. Yeah. See you all next time, everyone. Bye. Peace. Thank you again to all of our patrons for supporting us another month. It means the world to us that you like our strange let's play channel slowly morphing into a book club (laughs) and we really appreciate that you want to keep supporting that um people who support us at patreon.com slash apr get access to a whole bunch of episodes uh before they're made available on the main channel and all the money we make from that goes back into this channel right here lets us buy games keep our equipment up to date and keep making better and better things for you to enjoy We'd love to give a super special shout out to the patrons in our I'm Jack Din tier, including Alice, the Fighting Doll, and Snow Flurry. I just realized I did my sales pitch for this one backwards, so just pretend that there's something really cool to end off the end off here with. All right, um, yay! <laughs> Thanks for the vote of confidence, honey. I appreciate it. <laughs> Smash, smash that like, comment and subscribe.